An Indonesian minister has threatened Australia with releasing a human tsunami of over 10,000 asylum seekers on Australia if they continue to ask for mercy for Andrew Chan and Mayuran Sukumara, the two Australians who are being sentenced for trying to smuggle heroin out of Bali. They will be facing a fire squad, firing squad for drug smuggling charges. Chan and Sukumara have already been moved to the prison island where the execution will take place. Here is what the Indonesian minister said in his exact words in the threat to Australia. He said, if Canberra keeps doing things that displease Indonesia, Jakarta will surely let the illegal immigrants go to Australia. There are more than 10,000 asylum seekers in Indonesia today. If they are let go to Australia, it will be like a human tsunami. And of course, Canberra is referring to the Australian capital. Um, Jose, I don't know how I feel about you know somebody, especially an Indonesian minister, referring to people in their country who are seeking asylum in another country who want to get out, kind of referring to them as a threat and a weapon. Like, we're just going to let these people go on your shores yeah. if you don't stop messing for us with us. And what they're complaining about is Australia complaining to them about releasing their own citizens who are there merely for drug charges. And of course, uh, drug smuggling isn't an automatic death penalty in Indonesia. Yeah. Well, in Australia, like it is in Indonesia. Yeah, in Indonesia, ahead. you know, drug related uh, crimes are very, very. Um, taken seriously. Taken seriously in Indonesia. But going back to this threat, I think it's a bully, you know, a bullying move from Indonesia to prevent public opinion to look into the transgressions and the, the lack of, of human rights that are happening inside the, 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 the penitentiaries in, in Jakarta. I think it's, that's, that's the main issue is that if you keep bringing attention to my country, I will send these 10,000 illegal immigrants and then you'll have to deal with it. Okay, that's a very good point. But really what bothers me the most is the fact that they're willing to let these people go, knowing that it's a very dangerous journey on these boats that are, you know, yeah. packed to the brim to say the least. It's not safe for people to travel like that. And they're saying, we're gonna let them go just because you're pissing us off. And kind of using these people as tactics uh, for negotiating And of that war. goes to exemplify the lack of regard for human rights. Which is why there Which are is so why many... The, the, the whole issue is to begin with is that Australia is saying, the way you are treating my citizens, regardless if they're guilty or not of the crime that you, you're, you're punishing them for, is the main problem is that you are not respecting human rights. And then they respond by saying, well, look what I do to human rights. I'm going to put all these humans that I don't care about, send them in some boats, and then you deal with it. Yeah, and if they make it, they make it. If they don't, if they drown in the care. sea, yeah. we let them go, but whatever, you started it. Again, yeah, it ridiculous. Is and plus, Australia is not exactly known for being very, very hospitable to Indonesians that are coming there. You know, they, they, they really try to discourage it a lot. Yeah. Um, and also... Indonesia's not really worried about any sanctions they can put, a, put back towards them. Uh, the same uh, minister, he was saying that Australia will in fact receive pressure domestically if it stops its livestock exports to Indonesia, since Indonesia is Australia's main market. So they have a lot of things to kind of move and bargain with, but at the same time, ultimately, it's just irresponsible on the Indonesian's government's part, and you can't use humans as weapons like that. I mean, and, and the, the whole Bali 9, the, the whole story of these nine Australians that got captured, for smog smuggling heroin, and only two of them are the ones that are already facing the death penalty, has been covered in Australia to a great extent. But the, the main issue is attention of the world to the issue. I think that that's what the threat from Indonesia to, to Australia is all about. I don't think there's any possibility that they forgive these, these two Australians' lives. Oh, well, they're not. They're, they won't, unfortunately. But at this point, what ja Jakarta is trying to avoid is more attention to the way they treat their prisoners and to the violations of human rights. Yeah, we see that a lot with, um, well, predominantly Muslim countries are often criticized for their human yeah. rights when it comes to punishments. So, and, and oftentimes you see them rejecting these, these bids for, for leniency or for anything mm -hmm. from the West, and they, they oftentimes, they take it very seriously. Like they take it as a direct attack from the West. Like, for example, we see Saudi Arabia coming out and accusing Western media of attacking them uh, because we're asking for the release of Raif Badawi, the, yeah. the guy who's just a blogger who's gonna maybe be even sentenced to death for it. 
So you, they see that as a direct attack, and then it really, they're very sensitive about those things, and it really angers them. And yeah. that's probably exactly why Indonesia is threatening Australia in the first place. Um, so let us know what you guys think, of course, like always. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the Lip TV.